Hey, if you are looking for an overview on travel palettes and want to know how to pick the best travel palette for you, then this is the right video. I make weekly art tutorials, paint alongs and vlogs. I love to travel and to create art as I do. And in this video, I'm going to be talking through the important considerations that will help you when it comes to picking a palette. I'll be highlighting different features of all these palettes, but if you want more specific in-depth reviews, then be sure to check out the other video that I created where I highlight the individual pros and cons of most of the palettes that you see here and if you have any questions then feel free to ask them down below in the comments and I'm always happy to help. I will link all the palettes down below in the description and as it so happens there is currently a sale on at the moment so be sure to check out that link if you're planning on buying a palette now. All that being said, the first consideration is whether you want to have a palette that is empty or whether you want one that already has the watercolors in it, so a curated palette, or whether you are on the fence about it and we can kind of discuss what to do in that case too. I'm going to start off talking about the empty palettes. These are perfect if you already have watercolors, if you already know what kind of colors you want, if you want some level of flexibility, or if even though you don't have the watercolors, that's something that you enjoy. The idea of finding each individual colors and making your own palette is something that appeals to you. Then an empty palette is really ideal. Now the first palette is this one. It is a plain metal tin. This is easily accessible through Amazon, through Jackson's and through a number of different sites. They come in a range of different colors. Um, sometimes they are under the name Meden, but there's just a whole different range of palettes that either have this front or sometimes they come black. The premise is essentially getting an empty metal palette. One of the excellent things about this is the flexibility so you are able to place anything from one half pan should you wish all the way up to 20 sometimes 21 half pans inside them they are very great if you love using magnets in your urban sketching setup and magnets if you haven't tried them are again incredibly helpful just because they help keep everything in place when you are painting out and about on the go and they just make things a little bit more comfortable they can take both half pans and four pans because there's no like set ridge it's just three empty rows another thing that i tend to like to do with my pans as well is adding some magnets at the bottom just to ensure that they are extra safe and extra secure when they are in there one of the drawbacks of this is that because it is metal it will rust with time especially given the fact that with by the nature of painting with watercolor we add a lot of water i've had this palette for two years now it hasn't rusted i haven't had any issues but i know that if i were to be showing you my palette in 10 years time that perhaps would be a completely different conversation in addition to all that they are also usually very affordable um, at the moment they're probably anything between 10 pounds to 15 pounds depending on where you go they come in a range of sizes again magnet friendly but one of the reasons that i like this is that you can fit quite a good number of paints and still conserve quite a lot of space the next consideration is a plastic and i'm thinking about it in terms of different materials so one of the wonderful plastic ones is the portable painter and i've made a whole separate video that i'll link up above for you just talking through the pros and cons of this very cleverly designed palette one of the benefits of plastic is that it's lighter than the metal palettes it will not rust but one of the drawbacks is that you won't be able to use magnets or rather you won't be able to use magnets unless you were to buy like strips of metal that you can get from amazon to stick that and then in theory you can use the magnets but inherently you can't as i've mentioned i've already kind of made a video highlighting the pros and cons of this specific palette because it is ingenious it, it comes with two cups in the side that you can either use to add water or you can use to carry your brushes it has plenty of mixing space but one of the drawbacks is that unlike the flexibility that comes with some of the metal palettes where you can put any size palette in there with the plastic palettes it doesn't tend to be the case with this one for example the portable painter you can only put half pans in or their specially curated corner pans they also have if you want something even smaller, the Portable Painter Micro. So again, it depends on what you are prioritizing. If you want to use magnets and you know you like using half pans a lot of the time, then this metal palette is for you. If you want something that is light, that allows you to carry water, then has more mixing space, then this Portable Painter is for you. 
if you want something that is as small as possible then it doesn't really get much better <laughs> or much smarter than the portable painter micro which again is also made by steve padden as you can see you can fit six colors but it also comes with custom pans so you can fit a lot more colors in this space depending on what you want this here you could use to mix or to add water and it has an additional two mixing spaces so it's a very versatile palette it's incredibly light as i said it technically doesn't allow you to use magnets unless you buy those little um kind of bits of metal and stick it on so that you can do that and it is incredibly light <laughs> compared to everything else so plastic palettes will really appeal to those who want a light setup you are essentially going to end up getting a very ergonomically thought out palette and it won't rust in addition if you are the type of person who is happy to have 12 or 18 colors or six colors who really wants a limited palette or are happy to have a higher number of colors but in a smaller quantity as is possible through these custom palettes with the portable painter micro then again these will work for you great then we have some even more special palettes these are perhaps a bit more novel and that is for example a portable ceramic palette so this has been created by etcher designed by stephanie law and essentially what they have created is a tiny adorable set of ceramic palettes so in this portion you can add all the colors that you want to add whereas this portion you can use to mix and you carry it all together inside this metal case this ceramic palette has 19 wells for watercolors and seven wells for as mixing space that you can use to add extra watercolors should you wish this is perfect for those who absolutely feel the need <laughs> to use like porcelain or ceramic palettes when mixing it's kind of the best way that i have come across of carrying around a ceramic palette with you and essentially carrying a bit of the studio with with you out and about obviously these are not compatible with magnets they are slightly heavier than the metal palettes they are much heavier than the plastic palettes be mindful that this palette can't fit standard half pans or full pans but this is perfect if you are the type who already has tube watercolors and likes adding them to your palettes just to highlight the fact that it's nice in practice it had almost completely like it was pretty much dry and then there's something about the humid weather and traveling that just resulted in this mess which i'm going to tidy up and clean up but that's definitely another consideration to take in mind because you can't carry that much paint and if you try this madness may happen this is best suited if you're going to have a flat surface to work on or a space whether that be an artboard or something like the etcher slate or etcher slate mini or just a table it may just be a lot to balance on your lap especially because because it is breakable so just be careful this is a very clever palette and then la creme de la creme so this is the fraser price palette box and this is a brass palette this is a luxury item <laughs> i would argue it comes with a cup with two partitions so that you are able to add water and carry that on the go as well as a small bottle to add water which also doubles as a mixing area when it comes to watercolor palettes this is pretty much la creme de la creme it will not rust and the price reflects as such so this by far is the most expensive palette this was built to last for years and years and years so if you are an avid urban sketcher or an avid painter if you are looking for a luxury item if you want something that will last for 20 years 30 years your entire painting time then this beautiful palette would be the one to consider some of the drawbacks of this palette and other brass palettes in general is the cost um, they are significantly more expensive than other palettes quite often there can be a prolonged waiting time for them this one in particular is available at jackson's rather easily but it does retail at a hundred pounds empty currently and that is considered affordable for a brass palette but more expensive than the other palettes we have discussed already and in addition to that this is the heaviest palette and it is not magnet friendly in addition to that the brass palette can carry up to 18 half pans or nine full pans enjoying this video so far then don't forget to hit the like button and to consider subscribing as it makes a massive difference to me and to my channel and it allows me to continue to create for you now that we've discussed the empty palette let's move on to the curated palette and 
that kind of highlights the different types of empty palettes so if you already have your watercolors and you have an idea of what you want to add then these are the different options that are out there for you that being said it does not mean that you can't buy a palette that already has watercolors in it and then replace your watercolors but if you were looking for specifically empty then this would be a good place to start if you really liked one of these palettes because they are made with such an intelligent design and you wanted to have them but you were a bit confused or stuck as to which colors to add and which colors to start off with when it comes to urban sketching and, play and plein air painting i have created a video highlighting the colors that i have chosen there are plenty of videos out there as well but in addition to that something that i recommend and i think is quite clever is looking to see the colors that are listed and sold in some of the pre-curated palettes that we're going to be discussing because more often than not these are put together by artists that have painted for many many years who know their craft and who have a certain preference so it's always a good idea to just have a look and see what you can learn from them what you what kind of inspiration you can draw from them the palettes may not necessarily be a hundred percent perfect for you but they're a good place to start so even if you want one of these palettes don't be discouraged if you don't know what colors you want Next, we're going to talk about the curated palettes. There are a number of pre-curated palettes that are perfect for urban sketching, and I'm just going to highlight some of them and just reiterate some of the benefits and the drawbacks of them. One of the clear pros is that if you really don't know where to start and you don't want to go through the effort of buying a empty palette and then finding out what colors to add to it then getting these kind of palettes is a good place to start more often than not they will be very affordable they will have been designed by an artist or have had artist input it will be something in the range of a split primary so you know two yellows two blues and two reds which will give you some versatility as well as additional colors and depending on where you get them from there will be good quality paints. Some of the pre-curated palettes that I have tried and enjoyed include the Van Gogh palette, the Winsor & Newton palettes, and the Roman Schmoll palette. I absolutely love the Roman Schmoll palette. I've made a whole video highlighting the pros and the cons of the palette of the color choice, and I will link it for you just in case you are interested. So as I've mentioned, the pros are that if more often than not, you will get a split primary, you'll get a good safe range of colors to start off on your urban sketching practice. If it is a palette like one done by Roman Schmoll, then it will be a palette that has had a lot of input from a number of different artists as well, which makes it even more robust and even more well thought out. This one here in the middle is the Roman Schmoll palette, which I absolutely love. I, ha I have added some extra colors. The set itself comes with 12 colors, which includes buff titanium, quinaphthalone yellow, gold ochre, Italian burnt sienna, quin magenta, pyrrole scarlet, aquarius green, which is stunning, sap green light, blue sky, ultramarine, intense shadow gray, and cypress burnt umber deep. And this is a very well thought out palette Palette is very versatile and one of the benefits that I think sets it apart from the other palettes that are here is not only the quality of the paints but also the fact that they are slightly different to your standard split primary palette. Buff titanium is a color that you wouldn't see in the other palettes but is used a lot by, by urban sketches. The Aquarius Green is a stunning colour that's unique to Roman Schmoll. The Quinacron Magenta is a super bright and vibrant colour that you evolve. So this palette itself has, has clearly had input from artists. The other palettes have split primaries. And again, I've highlighted, swatched and discussed that in the separate video that I will link for you. In addition to that, the Roman Schmoll palette comes in a metal tin that, as I've mentioned, is magnet friendly. This one is the Van Gogh set and it's a student grade as well as this Winsor & Newton Cotman set. So both of these are student set. They come with a great amount of mixing space. As I've mentioned, they are plastic, so they are lightweight. They are not magnet friendly and they contain student grade watercolours. But one of the drawbacks is that, especially if you're already establishing watercolours, it may omit colours that you like, or it may include colours that you don't like, that effectively you're buying. If this is just one or two, then perhaps that is acceptable. But if it's the majority of the palette, then that can be quite an inconvenience. Again, I want to reiterate that there is flexibility that can come with these palettes. So there's no reason why you can't get an 
curated palette and as you develop your preferences swap in and out colors as needed looking at the plastic palettes with the color choice in the van gogh the windsor and newton sets are a little bit more predictable perhaps dare i say not necessarily as exciting as the raymond schmoll one but they are a good place to start they are the split primaries plus a, a white and a black with a few earth tones all the plastic palettes come with a tiny brush of this one in the van gogh set it initially looks as if it's broken but it is not so you take this out to use the brush and in addition to that the back is shaped like this so that you are able to lift this out here and you have extra mixing space in addition to that i think one that needs a special mention is this so this is the winter and newton field case and i've made a separate video talking about it because it's again i love palettes that have a clever design behind them and this fits the bill the color choice itself i don't find very exciting um if i'm being completely honest i bought the palette for the sake of the palette not for the sake of the paint inside you know, it was around 30 pounds on sale which is the same as the portable painter empty so um i was just very drawn to this palette it has three mixing spaces it has a bottle that you <laughs> that you can carry water inside it comes with a brush that i've put away because it was tiny. i don't use these tiny brushes but it does come with a tiny brush as well as a sponge and it came with 12 colors i've just put two of them elsewhere and then this which is the top of the palette actually doubles as a cup so i just think this is such a clever palette there are two versions the palettes is the same but the paints inside are different one version has student grade watercolors the other version has professional grade watercolors i would recommend checking out both because at the time that i bought this the professional grade watercolors were cheaper than the student grade watercolors because of a sale so just have a look and then analyze as I, one of the drawbacks of all these plastic palettes is that they only allow half pans to fit so this one for example has oops as you can see fixed slots so you can only put half pans inside so it same goes for the field case and for the van gogh set the other thing that i mentioned in my previous video is that the van gogh set uses quite a lot of retail space um, for not much benefit so although this one has 15 colors it is significantly bigger than this little pocket set by Windsor and Newton which has 12 colors so it's almost a shame that they wasted so much space with areas in the middle they could have made that a lot smaller and maybe even given extra mixing space i have a couple of honorable mentions actually these are empty palettes that again are very cleverly made this first one is made by a youtuber and i will link her down below studio mm and this was actually a gift from a subscriber <laughs> an incredible subscriber called sherry it's 3d printed it's made out of plastic similar to the etcher ceramic palettes you are able to add colors inside this kind of round area as you can see here it can carry a lot of colors in a very limited amount of space and then in addition to that it also comes with these two discs that can be used as additional mixing space so you can essentially fit 42 watercolors inside and should you not want to fill up all these colors there's nothing really stopping you from using these wells to mix as well one of the potential drawbacks is that for palettes like this you would almost need a space to use it so although you could open it and use it like this if you're planning on using all the colors you would kind of need a surface to balance everything in order to use it in addition to that it is not magnet friendly friendly and you can't put your half pans or your full pans or anything like that this is perfect for someone who who has tube watercolors that they then turn into pans this is my gouache stay wet palette but the reason that i mention it here is for those who love using tube watercolors or love using watercolors straight from the tube don't want to turn them into pans but equally don't want to carry around 12 tubes with them this is perfect because it is a palette that will keep your watercolors or gouache completely wet i've had paint in here up to 
over a week and when I open it it still feels nice and fresh as if it came straight from the tube so again it comes empty it is plastic I have added magnets to the bottom to kind of incorporate them into my urban sketching setup but as I mentioned this is a great solution if you love tubes and you want to carry wet watercolors when you're traveling around if this stay wet palette can carry 16 colors but there are others that can carry even more if you are happy to have a slightly bigger palette so essentially these are some of the questions that you should ask yourself and answer to determine what kind of travel palette you should get for yourself the first one is do you have paints already and if you do are they tubes are they half pans are they full pans so essentially are you looking for somewhere to store the paints that you already know you love to carry around when you are traveling and if that's the case then you should consider the empty palette options or are you looking for palette altogether? You want the colors already included, in which case you should consider a curated palette. If you're a beginner and you're on a budget and you are happy to use student grade paints, then there are plenty of studio options or pocket size options that will allow you to try out watercolor in an affordable manner. If you are a bit more of an established artist or if you want to start off by using professional grade watercolors straight away, then there are options such as the Winsor & Newton Field Case or the Roman Schmoll curated palettes. The other thing is, do you use magnets in your urban sketching setup? And if you do, then would you prefer using a metal palette or would you be happy adding a thin strip of metal to your plastic palettes? Do you want something that's ultra light, as light as possible? In which case you might want to consider using the micro palette, which is nice and small and incredibly light and also gives you versatility in terms of the numbers that you can add up to 16 colors. The other thing is how much mixing space do you want? Do you need and do you prefer? If you want lots of mixing space, then perhaps you should consider using something like the portable painter or some of the metal palettes if you really like and love the feel and the look of mixing on a ceramic palette then perhaps the etcher ceramic mini palette is for you do you want the paint to stay wet in which case Can't i recommend anything higher than my amazing stay wet palette which how many colors do you want to carry around with you if you want a limited palette then the portable painter micro is an excellent option that being said if you want to carry 20 colors then you can fit 20 colors in quite a limited space using some of the metal palettes whether they be empty or curated if you want even more then the palette created by studio of mm can take up to 42 colors inside, again, quite a limited space. Ultimately, I hope that I have illustrated that there's definitely room for flexibility. There is an array of different amazing options of palettes out there for you. And if you have any questions about them or you're not sure, then feel free to ask down below in the comments and I'm always happy to help. If you've loved this video and you want to know even more information about a specific palette, then be sure to check out this next one. Where If you're still watching, then you are a real MVP and I really 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 appreciate you let me know that you're still watching by telling me which of these palettes was your favorite thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next week bye